God's word, faithfully preached, is his comprehensive equipment for changing lives, delivering them from the shackles of sin, the flesh, and the world, and transforming them into useful vessels through whom Jesus can pour out his blessings. Living Seed invites you to a feast of the truth as God's servant brings to us the word of life. Precious Father, we thank you very much for this evening. You never make mistakes. You have gathered us here today because you intend to do something with our lives. And even though we will have love for the whole thing to be overflowed, we know that you are mindful of those of us who are seated. Therefore, Father, I ask that you will send your word to us, particularly in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please be mindful of us, be mindful of our future. Speak because of where we are going to be in the next few years. Speak because of what your intentions for us lies in the future. We ask it in the name of Jesus. And nevertheless, you know where we are now. Father, speak to us. Explain to us in the language you understand. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Thank you for hearing us. Pray that as I speak, uh, each one of us will have a clear understanding of what you are saying. Thank you once again. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me begin by reading a passage of scripture with you. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. And I am going to read verses 12 to verse 14. First John chapter 2. Verse 12 to 14. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Are you with me? Are you with me? All right. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known me that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked now. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. Verse 14. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God that comes in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Praise the Lord. From that passage, you will, you will see quickly that the writer describes or divides the basis of a man's life into three. Can you see from that passage? Who are the three people he was addressing in that place? Eh? I'm not here yet. Children, young men, or who? That comes to the heart. If you don't die young, you will start as a child, you will become a young man or a young woman, and then you will end up your life either as a father or a mother, depending on your gender. Is that, is that easy to see? But you know, as we're looking at this passage, I saw different messages spoken to the three different segments of life. And this is where we got the caption of Battle for the Young. I thought I should begin from there. So that you will know what we mean by a battle for the young. Why do we say that the young man is living in a battle? 
First, you begin your life as a child protected. If a small child were in this place, no matter how busy they are, everybody's corner of the eyes will be on the child. If the child wants to fall, how many people will stretch their hands? Eh? Almost everybody around there. That's the life of the child. Protected, paid for. That child doesn't need to struggle to know what he's going to eat. When he's hungry, he doesn't say, Mommy, I'm hungry. Food will survive, uh, surface. That small child is fed, is protected, is provided for, is guided. Decisions are made for that child. That child does not have to worry about what will I take my bath in the morning? Should I go and sleep or should I go and play? All those decisions are taken for, for a child by parents, by elders, by people around. That's the life of a child. How many of you have been children before? Let me see your man. We are all children, isn't it? Even the clothes you wore was bought for you by your parents. Am I correct? Even the one you will wear on each day, when the one who made the decisions, only just went to the wardrobe and decided whichever one of his child, a uh, child, is going to wear today and bring the child and say, Hey, do not get it. come here. So the one who knows you can sit up on my leg and he puts the gun over your head, tie his car, put the car, do whatever she likes. Put a flower there, put something purple and green. Did you go to me? Just finished and you went out. You were a display of your mother's intentions. Am I correct? Your money and daddy. Everything you took decisions for you. You did not take any decision for yourself. That's the life of a child. And going to become a young man. And after some time, it starts saying, ah, I'm not a child. Supposing on your first day in school, you go in, just cast your mind back to three, on, three years ago, when you were in 100 level, four years, five years ago, depending on your level. Supposing on the first day of class, as you were all sitting down in the class, Somebody, man, girl, stood up, one of your classmates. Say, good morning, everybody. Everybody looks at her and says, good morning. Say, you see, I'm a child. Good morning, good morning. 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 <laughs> or supposing, on the other hand, let me jump the young man stage. After some time, you become an old man. I'm not yet an old man. Am I? No, I'm only an elderly man. Is there a difference between the two? Yes, I'm not a good man. What is on your first day class? One pretty old man stands up and says, Hello, hello, everybody in this class. My, my last birthday was 73. My grandchildren are in second condition. I just want to be a doctor. Yeah, I have your classmate. Who would like to be my roommate? Who would like to be my roommate? In class, the other particular name. What is his name? Grandpa Felix. But you see, the age of being a child and being a father. A grandfather is the age of being a young man. 
Because there are no children here, I will leave the children in the I've spoken enough about them, isn't it? And because there are no fathers, except for maybe some of these people, they are not, they are not old men yet, so, so I can I can push them aside. I want to concentrate on what brings to the young man. Can you go back to your Bible with me? You see verse 13, it says, I like unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. Then he said, I like unto you young men and young women by extension. Because you have what? You have become the wicked one. I like unto you little children because you have known the father. Then he goes to verse 14 again. He says, I have written unto you father, fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. Because you are what? You are strong. The word of God abides in you. And you have what? Overcome the wicked one. Now, whereas the language of speaking to children is the language of uh, you know the father, you know, you know parent, the language of the small child, the child, everything that has to do with children, with your father, and uh, your daddy's pet, your daddy's mommy's pet, and all of that. And when you go to old men, you say, hmm, you are known from the beginning. You start talking about the experience. Am I correct? But when it comes to the young man, the language that I'm hearing Brother Paul talk about there is the language of battle. Can you see it? You are strong and you are what? Overcome. Where do you overcome? Where do you overcome? In battle. So the life of every young man is a battle. You are already at war. The unfortunate thing is that many of us are not aware. We don't realize. And as such, many young people live their, their lives as if they are civilians on the battleground. Just imagine that somebody has gone to war. There are bullets fighting everywhere. People are popping their guns and hiding to shoot. Interballistic missiles are backline. And then somebody wears a badge. No, 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 no. Okay. It's the man that wears a badge. Then you see that young lady that does that she's wearing her. And she's catwalking. Where? On the battlefront. Where bullets are flying. What is she planning to make herself? Eh? A cheap target? A cheap casual? Unfortunately, many young people go through life oblivious of the battle that is raging over their lives. They take everything at face value. You know that nobody writes battleground on the wall when you go to the war. Do they write it? No, it's normal. Don't forget that thing. If the if war should break forth in the motion now, and they start shooting all the non indigenous <laughs> so people are saying, hey, no. How do you like to behave? You, your tongue is feeling like somebody who just came from the UK. You not only do your holidays in party, and once in a while you go to the bar to do And uh, that's why you live your life. We are not going to go much longer. How do you know I'm going to go much longer? Oh, not in the same part. No, not in the same Oh, if you want to have a good day, so come back. When you start talking, they do that. This one is what? They do not show them. But when you bring your your politics, even the way you walk, say, it already shows that you are not from here. And there is a battle in town. They then kill, shoot outside all non-indigenous. How are you likely to walk if you are about to go to Turkey? How do you walk? You are not seeing me now. Will you go there and 
you could have six and say thank you, thank you, thank you. That's why you will walk. You will gather yourself. In fact, you will look for you will go back to there. You look for one of those purple, purple scarves that I see all over the place. You wear purple on top of green. And tie the thing like this so that people will think that's because you are aware. But supposing there's somebody who did not know there was a book going on, she arrives in the town, straight in her stilts, and everything. And then uh, she's wearing her spaghetti, and she's walking and she's doing herself in the streets. That's an open invitation to disaster. Am I correct? He simply saying, Here am I, shoot me. Unfortunately, for many of us that are going through life as young people, we are not aware that we are in a raging battle. Life is not fair to the young man. Listen to me, I've been a young man before. Life is not fair to you at all. Do you know why? When you are a small child, Everybody ran it down to protect you. Everybody wanted to defend you. Why? Because they know you are vulnerable, you are young, you are immature, you are inexperienced, you don't have wisdom, you don't know your left from your right. Everybody says, it's a small child, not doing anything. Please help me. If you want to cross the road like this, and you see a small child approach the street, 200 elders will run for that child. To ensure that she crosses the streets safely. But when they see a teenager appear on the road and she wants to cross the road, how many people help you to cross? 24, 25. And you stand by the roadside, you want to cross. Do you know the truth? Even if they try to help you, you will not help you. Am I correct? We do it. You don't know what happened to me after I got married. In fact, I gave it back to my first child. And I went home to go and visit my father, my mother. So when I finished, my car was parked on the other side of the road. So my mother was seeing me off to my car. So we needed to cross the road. You know what happened? My mother held my hand. <laughs> so I was wondering. What does she want to do? She wants to cross. She said, Wait, what do you respond to? I do that. They say, Are you the one that has been helping me to cross the road every hour? You know, that's the young man. He doesn't accept her. Because he thinks he knows. Because he thinks he's already a mature person. Because she thinks that she can do, she knows what to do. She knows what to do by herself. Don't hold my hand. If anybody came to the side of the road to try and help a teenager to cross the street, the teenager will look and say, Thank you very much. I can cross the road by myself. Imagine it's a six year old girl. You are going to church. She's fully dressed. And you Carry her, you want to back her. How long will she agree for you to back her? Before you walk, it is an attempt. Let me walk on myself. By that time, she's aware she's pretty. By that time, she wants to show up her new dress to her friends. By that time, she's beginning to have thoughts of herself. She's beginning to think that I am older than that. I'm not a small child. I've, I've seen arguments between mother and child. The child is seven years old. Do you think I'm a child? The mother says, What are you? He said, I'm not a child. You are not, I'm not like an appointment. You know, sister that is three years old. How is a child? Me, I'm not a child. That's the problem. Do you know what the problem is? Do you know what the problem is? Do you know what the problem is? the problem with the young man? As soon as you are entering good and young adulthood, you begin to take responsibility by yourself. You want to face life by yourself. You want to make your decisions by yourself. You want to make your choices by yourself. 
People are looking at you. They can see that you are making a wrong choice. If they are trying to help you, what are you likely to say? Don't worry, leave me. I know my, I know what I'm doing by myself. It's a perennial problem I handle all the time between parents and their teenage or young adult children. The crisis is always she treats me and tip on me chat. She talks, he talks to me and see and see a small boy. He just be shouting small boy. He just be shouting small boy. That was what I had my children saying about me one day. And I, one of them had done something and I disciplined him. And I was why are you doing this? Don't you know that that is wrong? I'm not going to finish. And I went upstairs. It's the second I came back downstairs immediately. And I was passing by their room. He went there, so you know what I got from him. He went this person. He said, what did you do? Hey, what happened between you and daddy that uh, the whole house is uh, on fire like that? And then I said, don't mind that. Mind that. He's not shouting on somebody. He's not shouting. He's not shouting on somebody. So I said, so everything I said is about to work. Shouting. Everything I said. I was just chanting on something. And I was just chanting on him. What do you want to try chanting on? On some point. So, every instruction that I thought I was passing across, that instruction was for who? Some point. Every connection, everything I was saying, that I thought I was telling my child how to do something good. She had. And that's the life of the young adult. That's the life of the young adult. When it's time to start becoming aware of your own success, and you start, you know, uh, the normal things, and your mother says, you he said, Mommy, wait in now. Mommy, can somebody not talk to friends? Say, hmm. That's how I used to talk to friends. So, say, Mommy, that's your time. That's your time. You are post school. That time, that time. Say, Mommy, don't worry. This and all like that. That's all, all mentality of things. He said, hmm. Hmm. You will not accept that. You will not accept instruction. Something tells you you are already what? Yes, you are not because you are a young adult, a young, inexperienced adult. And for the most part, you are an adult who is not aware of the battle that is raging over your head. Most of the time, you are, you are thinking that the person you are dealing with, the people you are dealing with, are just your friends. In your mind, my colleagues, my friends, my parties, those that were in the same class together, those that were in the same school together, those that we went to the same technology school together, that we are still connected. Oh, my Facebook friends, uh, my social media contacts. In your mind, that's all you think you are dealing with. But if what Brother Paul said in that first lecture chapter two is correct, who are you dealing with? Look at the Bible. Who are you dealing with? Eh? <laughs> There's an invisible enemy that is fighting you. He doesn't show his face many, many times. He acts through trying faces. Many, many times you relate with the wicked one. Even though you think you are relating with friends and colleagues and classmates, you don't know that the person that you are living in your life and trying to overcome. Oh, I wish I had time to talk to you about old age. I am not yet an old man. I insist. I'm not yet an old man. Because an old man is a man who is no longer thinking, who is no longer active, who is no longer. I'm, I'm not like that. I'm not informed that I still have visions to pursue. 
Ali Ali. Who is a typical old man? That man that sits in Jordan. What did you say? Eh? I can tell you. The typical old man is that man that sits in front of his balcony. You live in there where you are going to work in the morning. Where you are coming back, where you meet him in the same spot. It's something the cars that are passing. Oh, my God, oh. And he's talking to you. And when he was saying, if you have the mistake of sitting to talk with that old man, how long are you going to spend there? One hour. He said, in 1975, mm, you know you are very tired. I know when I go to visit my father, my father is still alive, so I cannot be alone. My father is overnight. If I don't have a minimum of two hours, I don't go and visit him. Because when you say you want to go, say, hey, I, I, you know that thing I said I was going to tell you. Then I say, that means, fuck, I go out again, say, sit down now, where are you going? That's how we'll be talking. We'll be talking two hours minimum. That's an old man. Old men are always reminiscing. Is that correct English? Reminiscence. They are just mm -hmm. I remember when I wanted to join UPC in 1962. That time, the general manager of this country called me over to I remember that they had you. Mm -hmm. If I had known, I would have won my suit that day. It was the bad people that I won that made me to lose that job. And an old man is always thinking back. An old man is always, they don't look forward because there's no forward for them. They have reached the terminal points of their life. They're always thinking back. They're always looking back. They're always explaining things in perspective from the back. You are not like that. For you, your life is, is, is ahead. Your future is ahead. You are thinking of the context. I can do this. When I finish this course, I am going to set up my building. I am going to do this. I am going to travel as well. I am going to be a, in fact, I am going to be a, 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 a brain surgeon. We must stop until I become things like this. I am not of that. You are always thinking forward. You are always thinking ahead. I wish life was as easy as that. I know you don't like listening to old men, but if you have an old man in your house, don't worry, don't devote one weekend. And tell yourself, this one weekend, I want to keep it in the park. Clear it and see them. I'm going to say, let me talk to me. What happened to you? When you wanted to get a job, we demand we are just to sit in the seat before it starts. Because you will hear stories. And those stories sometimes are very useful. You hear the story of the man who was not aware of the battle so now is there. You hear stories of men that became casualties. You, they will show you the junctions of their life, where they fell. Some of them will tell you the stories of how they married their first wife. And that woman nearly killed them. I think it is on your own ground and you say, hmm, I gave them a good one. All these men, you see, my, my daughter, all these like my face looking boys, they have plenty of money in their pocket. Plenty of money in their pocket is not equal to plenty of love in their hearts. You'll be hearing philosophy. Am I correct? If you have time, go and listen. The trouble is that many young people don't know that there is a battle raging over their head. And as you are looking at me, this afternoon, I'm really wondering 
I want to ask you, are you, are you aware of the states in us that are arranged in this room? Are you aware of things you must overcome in order for you to become a successful person in your life? The odds are high. Are you aware of battles you must fight and win if you are going to be well in the near future? For the most part, most young people are completely unaware. I was not aware of myself in my young age, my early ages. I thought life was just to enjoy. Just to pass around, wear nice clothes, show up with your friends, be the envy of all the girls around. And all of them are wishing to be your best friend. And then you are the most eligible bachelor in town. That's what we used to say those days. I knew that that's not your language. You just, you are moving around. You don't know that you want to show yourself like a flower. The more you attract enemies of your future. There are insects that are only interested in perching on you and sucking your nectar. And when they are sucked, you try. What do they do? They look for the next available flower. If I don't get anything across to you this evening, there's something I want to go home today. The odds against me, they are, the odds against my future, they are high. These are not on the surface. I wish somebody had spoken like this to me in my younger age. <laughs> I want to thank God that I made, I made my own decisions, my own correct, the most important decision in my life. I still made it as a teenager. I can look back now. Whereas some of my mates, they look back, they talk about stories and casualties. Me, I can look back now and I can thank God that I gave my life to Christ early. I was just 19, I was about to cross. Out of teenage life, when God arrested me, I want to tell you, if, if I had not given my life to Christ before I entered the university, you would never have heard of me. Can I show you? I would have, I would have died of that. I, I the kind of things that were happening inside of me, and I remember I wanted to live my life. I was driving to me to live my life as a teenager. I let me perfect the art of drinking without getting drunk. Thank God in my time. Let's give me time. What were the vices that we can get into that time? Is it more than drinking than smoking? There was no paraga. Eh? There were no hard drugs. Cocaine was the only one oh, that was even no cocaine that I eat marijuana. Even marijuana, it is only the very rich and very, very wayward boys and girls that pull me back. So if you didn't say we are doing what are we talking about? Smoking, drinking, carrying around girls. And many times you carry around girls, say we are not doing anything together. For your time, I'm sorry for you. My children have begged me that I should stop saying this thing, but I don't know how to stop. Many times I look at my children and say, my, my sons, I say, I'm sorry for you. Your time is difficult. The odds that against you are too If you escape, and become a responsible member of society, and you have a correct home, and you are properly married, and you are proper children, and your, your home becomes an exemplary home for others to envy. 
there is no point. I mean, somebody will say, go and perform that really good for another. It's a miracle, yes. A nine-year-old girl already knows what her mother did not know when she was giving birth to her first child. There are pornographic sites that can teach, teach you anything. One mother was in the same house with a nine-year-old girl. The girl does not have to. The mother is the only one that has a nine Of course, she's a rich mother. She has one of the super homes. And it's only herself and her daughter that were in the house for this length of time. Then one day she carried her phone and she wanted to browse on blog to find the information that she's going to use in her office. And suddenly she saw pornographic sites on my phone. What's happening? When she wants to treat this one, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Once you are visiting a site frequently, you know they will be suggesting to you. So suggestions to them. Every time she opened YouTube, <laughs> like this. So she said, somebody must have used my phone to do something. I'm not to. Is it this lamba that I'm going to visit the other time? Is it this person that did? Then finally she called the daughter. And you did, did you kind of say, I didn't do anything, I didn't do anything, I thought uh, I was just looking at the photograph in your when they beat the girl very well. She confessed, she had been watching photograph. Who taught her? Let's look at the story of the Bible. Because I remember the time is wrong. Look at the Bible. Let's look at the man, you will have heard of the story of the man called Joseph. Do you remember Joseph? I basically have been to Sunday school. Those of you that are not in Sunday school, that didn't go to Sunday school. Genesis chapter 27. Genesis 37. Are you there? Wrong, wrong. Let me read a few verses before we start telling the story. I want you to see the story, the life of a young man, and the odds that a young man has to overcome in order to become something in life. When I look at Joseph as a man, I will look at the girl also in the Bible. I will look at this as a boy, then I will look at another story as a girl, so that you will see that it's more or less the same thing. Verse 2 of the Genesis 37, these are the generation of Jacob. Joseph being how many years old? 17. So this is somebody who is uh, not too far from us. I know that there are some of you that are not too far from 17. Some of you are older. You are in your early 20s. You are not too far. You can relate to this guy. He was feeding his stuff with his brethren. And he lied. He was with the source of Bilha. With the source of Zilpa. His father's uh, wives, and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his own age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, what did they do? And could not speak the same way of the game. Look at that side. And Joseph dreamed a dream. I'm reading the text no more. And he told his brethren. And he read the name yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed for behold, who are finding ships in the field. And lo, my ships are rose and swim upright. And behold, your ships swim round about it. And made round a day in my ship. And his brethren said to him, what, what are you talking about? Shall thou indeed reign over us? Shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they later him get the more for his dreams and for his word. For that is coming from doing another thing. And he drink yet another thing and told it to his brethren and said, Behold, 
I have given you a few more. And behold, the son and the moon and the devil stars were bowed down to me. He told his father and his brethren, and his father said, Keep quiet again. Unfortunately for Joseph, by this time, his mother was dead. Did you know his mother was dead? His mother died when? When he was giving her to his junior brother, Benjamin. You know, may God help you if you don't have a mother to talk to. If it was her mother that she spoke to, what would the mother have done? The mother would say, Shh, eh? this kind of dream, my son, may God make the dream come to pass in Jesus. Mothers have capacity to obey the dream. Are you hearing me? Mothers don't mind if their children are better than themselves. But your friends, they mind. <laughs> Your colleagues, what did I say? They mind. They don't want you to be better than them. In fact, not every father is capable of nurturing a young dream to maturity. Look at one good thing about young people. They have dreams. Don't let me use the word dream. Let me use the one appropriate word. What is it? Visions. They have insights into the future. They, can, they are capable of painting a picture of their future while still in their today. When you meet a young man or a young woman who doesn't have any plan for his or her life in the future, Abba is a very terrible child. It's even a problem for the parents. In those days, when we were in school, we had a special name for them. We used to call them NFAs. You remember? What do you call your own now? What do you call them? You don't have name for something. You call them no future ambition. Say so in the NFA, you don't get any better to do. And they are there in every class. Their highest ambition is to get money to buy, to buy what to eat. Maybe Suya. And drink, that's all. If they have money and they can buy a trouser, that's all. They have no dream for the future. But look at Joseph rising up in life. When he was a small boy, his father loved him and protected him. You remember, I told you, every child is not like the better. When his senior brothers go out to come feed the floor, where does the father tell you to say, say stay in the house? Stay in the house. Don't let them do something to you. But they are taking that. When the father could not protect the young boy, let's see what happened. His senior brothers went out, uh, verse 12. Are you with me? And his brethren went to feed their father's floor in Shechem. And Isaac said unto Joseph, Do you know that brethren feed the floor in Shechem? Come and we send you unto them. And he said to me, That amount. And he said, Go and pray me. See whether I be well with that brethren. I'm well with the floor. And bring me to the gate. So he sent him out of the veil of evil. You know, when they say the veil of evil, that was the seat of the patriarch. That's where the father came. Hebron is the place where they buried the Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. That's where the, 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 the it's like the, the the generational compound that provided comfort and protection for this young life with a vision. This young man that has something and somewhere to go with his life, they get him in the pain. And it is true. If your parents have their way, you will do your university inside their house. Am I correct? If they have their way, you will do properly secondary university, you will do masters and PhD in their bedroom. Why? Because they are afraid for your future. Several of you, your parents, I see how your parents drove you. They carry you in their car, they didn't allow you to come by public transport. 
the day you were, you know, in Sumi, they came, they, they helped you, they went to the hostel, they were able helping you to arrange your, your honor. Until you then go away from me, please. I'm in school, you're in It's okay, thank you, I've been my room by myself. Say, no, go to the point that I tell you, you don't listen. I can help you to arrange your motto so that your food will not be a start and say, I'm not a small child. You go to yourself, thank God. After today, you will do what? You will go. You will go and leave me again. That's a child. But there came a time. No matter how much you love the child, you have to release the child from the day. And you see, your parents have started releasing. Even though this is still a guy that release, I mean, they release you small, they come and carry you around. They release you small, they come and any small thing they have before. Hello, Tony. Did you get your kind of car? I told you to be taking vitamin C every Sunday. Did you take it? I know now, you find that now. I see more. I see my wife living with my boys, and I think more. Oh, these boys are doing long and cheap. This boy is already twenty-two. Leave this boy in the room. Let him live his life. Say, but she, I should not. I should not tell him to do the correct. They say leave him in the room. You better to do the correct. And then finally, they will release you. That's how. They kept him on Moses. You remember when they came back to Moses? That's how they kept him. Until after three months, the boy's crying could not no longer be. They had to throw him in the river. There's only the time when we have to take our hands off him for three months. Those next father had been keeping this boy, keeping him at home. But the father knew what they said. This boy is old enough and to know how to handle himself. Come and come and see your brethren. Now, and you know, this is what I want to point out to you. In the eyes of his parents, those other, they are not 11 now, 10 brothers. What are they to Joseph? Yes. Brethren, brothers. But in reality, what are they? Enemies. Hateful enemies. That's why I'm telling you that. See, your life is not at the surface. All those people that are smiling at you, they are not necessarily friends. They may carry the tag of colleague, postmates, friends, acquaintance, Facebook friends, but they are not friends. There's something else beyond. There's a vision about your future that the enemy of your soul can see and is going to be for any available vessel with which to quench that your rising star. This is what we mean by the battle for the young. The life of the youth is a battle. It's, it's, it's battle. Every time I look at my, at my life, I think back. I insist that I'm not an old man. But you see, I'm already old enough to start looking back. I think I've done things that will have destroyed my future. I look at near escapes. When I remember sometimes my body will shake. Ah, supposing I did not survive that experience. Don't think the man of God I am today. Don't have a certain home that I have today. I will not, I will not, I will not have been thinking. Something keeps telling me, Ukuri Demo. Ujaga. How do you say that in English? You escaped. Eh? You escaped. You escaped. I escaped. May you escape in the name of Jesus. You know what I'm talking about. Me that I already know that I'm going to support. It was at age 20 that I committed my, my life to preach the gospel. It was 20 years of age. We went to a street like this. 
And we have, when I had the word of God, I had the message, I stood up and went to the, I actually went to the back of the altar. At the back of the altar was a street. I still remember there were trees everywhere. It was a secluded spot. I put my hands on the back of the altar. I said, no, if there's a way you can use this small, you said, I hope you know in every class I was the shortest boy. Every class. There was only one class when I found somebody that I used half an inch to be taller than. And I was very excited. I said, you can use this short, nominated, thick. I was serving with my life. I will pray the gospel with my life. I was just 20 years of age. And if you know the bad things that have gone on my head, I'll tell you only one. Every time I remember, I wonder how I escaped. I was very really born again, due to the Holy Spirit. Yeah, this, this. I graduated from the university and I went to NYC and I met sisters. Yeah. What did I say I read? Sisters. We in fellowship together. We are brother, 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 When I saw the affinity that was developing between the two, I said, wait, let's, let's define against you. Let's, let's talk. He said, ah, what do you mean like that? I said, I hear you think. He said, yes, I already asked somebody at church. I said, ah, please go. So I asked. I did not know. Let me put the story short because I want to talk about it again. I know the story you like to hear. That. <laughs> Before I knew what was happening, she had broken up with the person she wanted to have because she has found this. You see, let me tell you, let me tell you, tell you. listen, listen. The brighter your future, the easier it is for the enemy to locate you. The higher the price tag on your head. She has seen this man up and by all means, she will go to manifest one of my words. Some people will even go and suppose to her, she will say, no, I already know the person I'm going to marry. Me like this, I was just eating rice from two flasks. Brothers, you do what I'm talking about. There you go. Which was just the government saying that? Which is concerned and after you go over I thought they did trans. What is my own? They got right. Sometimes they will try to me and say to me, I will not get no problem because I was speaking with a friend. Where is to be the case to me? And she finally said, but well, I'm not going to find me. You for what? I said, no, you know, as Christians, we have to find the will of And I'm great. God has not said, me and me will marry this guy. Say, me and great, and I'm sure. I thought it was true. So, our NYC was finished. And I told myself, once I go away from the NYC, I will do what? On the other day. The last day of NYC. This is not coming out of me. Say, even if they are not going to buy me, I want to buy the baby for you.
Is he is he's not Yes. My body will shake. If I tell you how I say that day, I should tell you. And I will tell her, I say, I say, you is not that I said, no, I'm serious. She was wounding my heart. So I said, it's okay, I have heart. Let me ease myself. So I entered the toilet. I'm from the middle of the toilet. I'm going to say that. That's how I escaped that function. I know Satan knows how to do that kind of thing. If I had accepted, I would have had a baby out of the earth waiting for me. You are not listening to me. The odds that are stacked against your future, they are high. It is not everybody you call a friend that is a friend. Joseph's father thought he was sending him to his brethren. But when they saw him coming, what did they say? He said, That's the dream of God. We will keep him and we will see what will become of his dreams. Can I tell you? It's not every colleague that is excited that you are, you are, your GP is in two months. I don't know how you calculate your own GP. Yeah. It's not everybody that's excited that you pass all your papers. You're in the extinction uh, student. All you can say, ah, the more you try, you don't snag everything. And they are smiling. I'm sorry for you. I'm sorry for you. Some of the people who have damaged people's future, they are people they thought were friends, but they were enemies. I remember the story of a, a young man that eventually gave his life to Christ. In younger age, he gave his life to Christ when he was already in his 40s, going to beat. And he was telling me his story. His father started a business. He joined his father in the way the business. After some time, he, he, but the father was doing the business, the son was doing it. And the son's business was growing. Bigger and was, he was already overtaking his father. It was his father that introduced him to drugs. And the simple reason is to scatter this. It is because his head is correct. That's why his business is already countered. I said, I said, your father, I said, it's my father that introduced me to drugs. And I said, does he do drugs? He said, no, he doesn't do drugs. But he introduced it to his son. There are people who can see your rising star. They can see your future. They know that if we leave you and God together, your future is great. Your future is wonderful. There are things lined up of your head. Every time the devil sees a star, leave heaven and cross the skies to come to the earth. He dispatches his demons to go and find out. Even for Jesus, do you remember? They saw the star. Can you imagine from day old, Satan wanted to keep that boy? How he escaped? Don't jump out and don't jump out and don't jump out and don't jump out and don't jump out before he finally go to the cross. If he had died any useless death before getting to the cross, his mission the life would have changed. Me and you would have still been sinners. Are you following what I'm talking about? You have dreams. There is a wonderful future ahead of you. But the people you call your brethren, the people you call friends, they are not as friendly. Now, that doesn't mean that you, you come and say, hey, so, Juliet, I need what you are me. That's not, I don't want you to be called paranoid. And then you start looking at everybody. Excuse me, do they write it on people's faces? Like, you think you will never find that. But Joseph, they took that boy. They decided they were going to kill him. But thank God, because the boy was a, a, a very sophisticated boy, he was a holy boy, 
He was walking after God. He did not like evil things. It is my considered opinion that it is probably Joseph that went to report Brother Ruben. You remember Brother Ruben? You remember what Brother Ruben did? And how he did for a at 11 that he was walking near the tent of uh, his stepmother, who was about the same age with him. You say, Jacob, who did marry him at the same age with your son? Marry first sister, marry second sister, marry first house girl, marry second house girl. Whereas there was a music that grew up in the same house with seven sisters. How many did he marry? Only one. But I gave up entire one family, marry senior sister, marry junior sister, marry house girl, marry second house girl. How will the son not worry? That's how Ruben used back. He was looking at people, and Jacob was not there. Joseph saw him say, Oh, but I'm there. 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 The tent of his stepmother, and something happened. Joseph sat there, and he was waiting for him to come out. When he came, he said, I saw you, brother, I will tell that. He was a poor boy. He was a poor You see, you don't get this kind of tricks by a useless life. It is not that I'm close to God. Who are seeking God, who are walking with God, they are the ones that God opens their eyes to see the future as he saw the future. See Joseph's small world. Finally, my time, because I said I was going to talk about the guest, let me know who to because my time has finished. Can I take some five more minutes? Ten minutes, fifteen, twenty. <laughs> I was only back in the house. The vision of the future of this young man was what made him to escape this darkness because he was walking close to God. Let me quickly talk about the girl. I'm sure you can suspect the girl I want to talk about. Her name is called Gina. Do you remember Gina? Do you know her? But who was Gina? The only girl among how many brothers? Eh? Twelve brothers. She was the only girl in the house. Let's read that story quickly. Genesis chapter 13. Four. Genesis 34. Very quickly. We don't have all the time to study Gina. Dina is a very interesting story. And Dina, the daughter of Leah, which she bear unto Jacob, went down to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamon, the Hebat, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defied her. And his soul claimed unto Dina, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the dancer and spake kindly unto the dancer. And Shechem spake unto his father, and was saying, Get me this dancer to wife. And Jacob heard that he had defiled Dina and his daughter. Now his sons were with his family in the field, and Jacob held his peace until they were caught. Now you see, when you rewrite stories like this, if you don't read them and think and imagine, that's what we call meditate. If you don't meditate, you don't know why it will allow. Because the Bible said, Dina just decided to go and see the doctors of the land. Is there anything bad in that? But I want you to know the context. There is a known only girl among 12 brothers. How do you think she would have been feeling? Eh? 
How do you teach in that routine? You photographers, they will, they will not, they are not listening to me again. It's your photography. Thank you very much. Are you back? Thank you very much. One day, she must have been living in a world of 12 brothers. Every time she wants to go, I say, Where are you going? I say, I want to go and buy bread. And they say, eh, eh, Zebulon and eh, Natalie, come and follow your sister. You know what I'm talking about? They say, eh, Okay, what I have finished, I want to go and buy your water. They say, No, no way. So I imagine all the time Dina must have been sitting on the back of seeing the daughters of the land passing up and down and wishing she can join them. But one day, everybody see one day. One day, many destinies are wrong. How many days? One day. One day happened. All the brothers went to farm. And it was only dinner at home. I don't know what happened that day. If you read my story, I try to paint the picture. If you read the book, Steps to Becoming Prodigal. I told you the story of dinner here. Yeah. I imagine that one day the Baba was sick. And there was a meeting the father was supposed to attend. He cannot go, so he sent the mother to go and attend on his behalf. So suddenly she was the only one left at home to take care of daddy. And then daddy went to this room and slept and was snoring. So Gina told herself, my only chance of going to see, who was she going to see? Well, that's it. Her enemies? Eh? We are not asking you. Did she plan to go and meet somebody who would defile her? No. She wanted to go and see her. You see, the problem that I want you to become aware of is that your life is in battle. You cannot afford to live your life like a civilian because you're on the battle front. You cannot just catch on anything you like. You whatever you like. As I'm close, let me read the scripture. Let me read the Bible passage for you in the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. If somebody has the message translation, Please stand and read for me with a loud voice. Ecclesiastes 11, verse 9. Ecclesiastes 11, verse 9. Where are you? Yes. You who are young. You who are young. Make the most of your youth. Eh? You know, relish. Give me a simple name for relish. Enjoy. Eh? Relish. Enjoy your useful people. Yes? Follow the impulses of your heart. Follow the impulses of your heart. If something looks good. If something looks good to you, do what? Pursue it. Do also. Hello? I did hear you. No, also, not just anything goes. Not just anything goes. You have to answer to God for every last thing. I'll form the hands. See the way they describe the young man. Young man. Are you describing the young man to me? Full of energy. Full of vigor. Full of feelings. Able to take any adventure. You are capable of doing anything. Nothing makes you afraid. It is a good man. Let's look at it three times. The last time I tried to do this one, that's why I'm going to fall down. Let's check it very well. No men don't check very well. They jump. 
He said, Release your youthful vigor. What do you mean of vigor? Energy, strength, adventurous spirit, capacity to face things, capacity to run into anything you like. You see me and say, Yes, I'm talking. That's a young man. Relish your beautiful vigor. Then he says, follow the impulses of your heart. What's the meaning of impulse? You have already come to the next You don't even know what impulses are. Who is, who, is, who is willing to attend? What are impulses? See how all of you are looking at me. I'm going to call you lecturers to come and look at you now. Let's get to the dictionary. Can I read the dictionary in any form? Eh? Who is saying? I thought you were the one talking. A force. It was building an object or something at the time. Good, that's a technical, medical dictionary meaning. Who wants to give me a simple image that uh, an educated people like me can understand? Eh? A sudden drive. Yeah. A dictate of your mind. Let me read my own definition. It says the influence of a particular feeling or a mental state on you that affects your course of action. A sudden involuntary inclination prompting to an action. And it was that thing you just suddenly feel inside your head and it makes you want to do something. That's an impulse. Impulses are tied to feelings. They are things that rumble inside of your mind, out of sight. Silently. And that Bible says, follow every impulse of your heart. Let me ask you, is that a correct advice to follow? Eh? Now, there's something in language they call, I don't know, I have forgotten what we call it in English now, but I know it's in Yoga. We call it a Dauro. What is a Dauro in English? When you say the exact opposite of what you really mean, I agree. It's not really I agree. Okay, I've forgotten my my legs and structure now. Literature is not far when I grew up. Are you following what I'm saying? He said, hey, young man, enjoy every energy that is inside of you. Practice your victor. Follow every inclination of your heart. But not everything goes. One day you are going to face the implication of your impulses, the implication of your actions, the implications of your choices. Can you listen to me? There are impulses in the heart of every young man. Every time, things are already coming, feelings are around inside of you. And in deep days of social media, oh, I'm sorry to inform you, you are no longer free. Everybody is a slave of what you need. You are being controlled. You are being manipulated. People are fashioning your, 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 your thoughts. Every time I look and I start thinking about this concept of celebrities, it's one of the most difficult things they have done to your generation. Who is a celebrity? It's a celebrity. Somebody that looks like he has succeeded in life. Then they come on social media. They flaunt their wealth. They flaunt their life. When they get pregnant, they take photographs of their stomach naked and show you. 
and you be on your knees. Look, what you don't know is that they are already they are fashioning your life. They are building your dreams. They are already telling you what to long after. It's not that you are not there. The same people that are going on a uh, holiday, they spend something to come out of, they will report to you the thousands of dollars they spent. They went on the dash, they went on this, they went on that one, they came back like this. Two or three years later, they break up. Are you not telling me? Don't you know that this life that they are flaunting and flaunting in front of you is not really a lie? But you see, unfortunately, they are forming your thoughts. If I look at some of your figures now, you are going to remove the natural one that God gave you, and you are going to look at artificial needs like that of the cross of the tiger. I'm wondering why. I know why. You saw it on social media. They painted it to you and see if you don't if you have fingers like this, you are not going to be anything. If the impulse, the feeling of heart to this things. Your thoughts, your inclinations are beginning to go. That's what I, you see. Every time I watch how a fashion takes hold on a community, you know, before fashions were limited to communities because there was no social media to spread it. If somebody waved his hair like this, if I tell you something, it's not, you know, people. Maybe some of you will not like Some of you here, I see on your head now. They are the hair they used to be. You know, it's very good news. And they want to portray a mad woman. Excuse me, sir. Those in Yanganaga, that's what they portray. They say, once you see that one inside the movie, you know that this one is mad. Now, that's what has become fashion. Sometimes you see. The real style of boys. Because this side, if a road here, do something like that. That's how they used to portray the vagabonds in the society. In those days, when you see people like that, you just know that this one, one more time, one more time. These are trends of society. But you see, they have become accepted now because. Those vagabonds of the society have so pushed it down on your throat. They stole you in every people. You see it on, on social clips. You see it on Facebook. You see it everywhere. And then you accept it. You think that I saw a billboard one day. Ah. I had to pray for my heart not to throw into bitterness. Because I thought I said, whoever did this before will have sent many people to death. They showed the picture of the young girl that you want for. They didn't show their faces. They just showed their middle legs. But what happened to it? And then they put the cash. They said, it's your life. Don't it. That's a big one. And girls, young girls. Who don't know too much, but think they know. They will see that, eh, eh, nah, eh, don't know why they are always wanting to. They are always they want to guide you. They don't want you to be free. They are always talking about the, the kingdom of God. They are always talking about who they are. If I like God, then you live my life in you. You may sleep your life the way you like. But know that everything has implications. The battle raging on your life is not small. Let me end by telling you that it is not possible for you to navigate your life as a young man and survive all the mind bombs, all the all the bombs, all the minds that are on the field of life. You know what I mean by that? All the things that you just place your leg like this and it will explode. They are all over there, they are covered. They are covered with pleasure. They are covered with excitement. They say, let's go have fun. Let's go and do this one. Let's go and do that. that. And you would like to follow them. How will you escape? 
just two minutes. Want to tell you that it's not possible for you as a human being to escape all those smiles and your own. It's not possible. Are you listening to me? It's not possible. You may either be helped or you will be pushed to actually fall into those things. That's why we have come. All of these arrangements is supposed to bring me to one point. All the story I've been telling this is to tell you, excuse me, the dangers ahead of your life, there are too much for you to cope with by yourself. I'm telling you, I have a survivor. I survived. Many of my families did not survive. Many of my friends now are casualties, casualties of who they married or who they thought they would marry. Casualties of not, an, uh, not one outing. Let's go on a date. And that was the beginning of the end of their life. It's possible that somebody will say to me, you're already a first level casualty. Something has already begun to go wrong because you didn't know. The life is not all about form. Life is not all about following the desires of your heart. Just wanting to be loved, not want to be like everybody else. Life is more than that. It's not simple that you are listening to me and say, hmm, I wish I had this message some two years ago. Every time they love the universities, my, I start crying, I start praying, Lord Jesus, this is dangerous. Many innocent girls who should have been in school studying and preparing for their future. One uncle who is for their life. One mechanic, one mechanic, rape this one, do this one, that, do that one, do something. Did not be any plan to be raped. She only wanted to go and see. What you don't do is that once you go out to go and see, you have given the world a chance to see you. Because it's the same world. The world that closes you in protects those that are inside. But those who go out is the same world that releases you to the dangers outside. Is somebody listening to me? You will not be able to survive unless you have God inside you. Everybody likes to follow it. You are there to do it. There's nothing else to follow. It's the impulses of your heart that you follow. It's the way you feel that. Now, the problem now is who is directing the impulses of your heart? I bring just one proposal to you tonight. It's the last ritual. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 26. Please read it. Proverbs 23, 26. You can read it in any translation. Okay, James, it's a fact. Proverbs 23, 26. Who is reading you? My son. My son. Give me thy heart. And let your heart. And let thy eyes turn my way. And let your eyes. So, one transition has been, my son, give me your heart. And stand and watch what I will do with your life. I come with a proposal this afternoon. I hear God say, there's a battle ahead of your life. It's too much for you. You can't go. I stand here and ask you, give me your heart. Let me direct the impulses of your heart. Let me be the one inside. Let me be the one controlling your feelings. Let me be the one controlling your actions. Let me be the one directing your choices. Because every choice, every action, they have implications, they have answers. And once you step on it that particular way, there's nothing anybody can do. You have to watch. I was, I was telling myself, what was God looking at when Jesus was being defiled? That's not the problem. Correct question. What was Dina doing outside the conference of the sciences? Would you like to bring it? 
my My soul, give me your heart. Give me your heart today. And watch to see what I will do with your life. I will bring your dreams to come to pass. I will make you reach your destination. My son, my daughter, give me your heart. Give me your heart. And I would like you to respond to that invitation today. While you are there, don't say, no, Jesus. Thank you that I'm hearing this. I thank God that I had a message like this. When I was 19, I would not have survived. It was because I gave God my heart. That's why I'm alive to tell this story. I lived with people that were on drugs. Said I would have finished my life. I would have been a drug addict. I had a, a very close friend today. We are the same age, but his life is scattered. Parents are very rich, but he cannot do anything for it with his life. Do you know, brother, do you know, sister, they are running away from him because he's a beggar. No, your life will not turn out like that. No, that should not be the end of your story. And God is saying, give me your heart. What will be your decision today? I want you to talk to God when you are married down the end and say, no, Jesus. Take my heart. Come into my heart today. Be, be the impulses of my heart. Be the one directing my thoughts and feelings. Oh, I cannot survive alone. But if you come in, this beautiful life that is a battle, I don't want to be a casualty. God doesn't plan you to be a casualty. He wants you to be a victim and not a victim. He didn't plan you to be the conqueror. He wanted you to be the conqueror, but you cannot do it alone. I would like to pray with you, wherever you are, sitting down, listening to the sound of my voice. Or even if you are listening on the Facebook or wherever they are streaming this, and something is saying, I would like to give you a heart. I would like to revive that experience for you. I cannot forget 14 years ago now when I gave my heart to Jesus. Things changed, things turned around for me. I became a new man from inside. He began to guide my life. I'm hoping you the same thing this evening. You like to indicate wherever you are just sitting now, raise your hand and say, please pray with me. Brother Larry, please pray with me. I want to hand over my heart to Jesus. God bless you. Just raise that hand quietly wherever you are. Say, please pray with me. I want to have over my heart to Jesus. There's no need to look around. They are not making the decisions for you. It's the decision that they now has to make for himself. Thank you. Thank you, God bless you. I see those hands. Please keep the hand up. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Raise the hand properly so that thank you. I see another hand. God bless you. God bless you. I see one hand. God bless you. I see another hand. Please don't, don't, don't divide me with it. Don't say, I will do it later. No, you will not feel like this later. This is when you will, you are, your heart is asking you to make a decision. Respond now. Don't allow yourself to escape this. Only to go and fall in the hands of those who think and friends. God bless you. Raise that hand. Some of our sisters and brothers are putting a piece of paper in your hand. Please raise the hand until you collect that piece of paper. I would like to take your name, your details, so that I can pray with you, so that I can help you, I can follow you up. It's over 40 something years ago that I gave my life to Christ. He kept me, he became. We've been praying for you. Raise that hand. And keep the hands raised until a piece of paper is put in your hands. God bless you. Thank you. I see some two other hands at the back. Thank you. God bless you. Any other person, don't try to be a tough guy. Jacob wanted to be a tough guy. He was struggling with God. They wrestled overnight. If God did not win the battle that day, Esau would have finished his life. 
No play tough guys and I don't say that. Everybody will be thinking that uh, I have become, I have become religious. If you don't become religious, you become from faith. You are not on God's side, you be on the side of the devil. And all you need to do for second to finish your life is to make no decision. Thank you, God bless you. You are ready. Raise your hand until a piece of paper is. If they have not put a piece of paper in your hand, maybe so that somebody can see and come ahead and put a piece of paper in your hand. God bless you. Thank you. I'll make this final call. I, I, I can perceive somebody. Somebody saying, when I get to my house, said, I'll go and, I'll go and pray. No, it's not the same thing. Jesus said, if you don't publicly accept me, I will also deny you before my father. Everybody who came on God's side, one day they had to make this kind of public decision. I'll give you just one more chance. Please raise that hand if you are not raising for Thank you. I see another hand. God bless you. Any other more person? Thank you, God bless you. I see one more hand in front here. Yeah? God bless you. Any more hands? They're saying, I finally have said I'm in alone to God. I will not allow you to spoil my life. I am going to Jesus. I'm going to leave me alone. Thank you, God bless you. Thank you, God bless you. God bless you. Any other hand? I see three hands coming up. I wait just one more, one more second. If you have been fighting, and God has finally won the battle, just go up with that hand and say, I, I'm, "I'm coming over. I'm not going to allow Satan to win the battle over my life. I cannot wait forever. I cannot wait indefinitely. I need to close for us to pray." One more thing for me. I'm not going to ask you to come out or anything. I just want you to stand up on your feet wherever you are to show that you really made that decision. All of you who collected a piece of paper, don't stand to your feet. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Don't stand. To you. Be bold about it. Those who go to do drugs, they do it for me. Those who are doing all the pornography, they do it for me. They do it for Satan for me. You want to give your life to Jesus, I want you to start and do it both and say, Yes, today is my decision. Even if it is possible that you have given that decision before, but you knew yourself, you know that you have come back. I think it's all right. Uh, camera, I mean, you can solve the camera. This, this no longer concerns anybody outside now. Thank you, God bless you. Just focus on me, don't focus on them. Please stand to your feet. And say, I'm making that decision today. It is possible that you've been a Christian before, but you know that you are no longer right with God. Friends are pulled you away. Parents think that you are still a good girl, but something has happened. Please don't sit down. Stand up. Join this people. Stand to your feet and say, I also want to rededicate my life. I want to come back home. I want to be. I want, I want to come back and be the real child of God that everybody thinks I am. Thank you. God bless you. If you collected a piece of paper, please stand to your feet and make this, this decision. Make it real. Make it real. Oh, thank you. I'd like to pray with you. Put your right hand in your heart as we pray together. Just talk to God for one minute and say, Lord Jesus, I hand over my hand. I hand over my life. Don't let shame push, push you away now. Tell Jesus, say, Lord, I hand over my hand. I, I ask you to deliver me from all that the enemy is planning for my life. Everything that I am involved in now that is not correct. Lord Jesus, come and pull me out by yourself. Come and destroy all the traps that Satan has made for my feet. I come over to you. Father, I pray for these ones that have come to make a decision for you today. Either for the first time or as in the education of their lives. Nobody comes to you and you reject. Father, this night 
in a way that they themselves may know coming to their heart afresh. Grant them and encounter this night. Come into their life and situation in a fresh new way. Begin to direct their hearts from today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I feel with you. I know you see that somebody here, by virtue of this decision, is escaping a mighty fall, a mighty draw into a pit. Father, I plead with you. Even if we see the pit, they will not fall into it in the name of Jesus. Every one of the enemy for this life has scattered into the name of Jesus. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name we pray. This has been Living Seed. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703-036359, 0703-768118. Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org